Hey everyone, it's Matt Olson with Boston Private. Today we're going to talk about some special letters of the alphabet that you need to know about if you're a business and if you're setting up accounts with banking institutions. I'm talking about KYC and AML. No, we're not talking about Kentucky Fried Chicken here, folks. We're talking about Know Your Customer, which is a banking requirement that came out of the Patriot Act, which was passed by Congress after 9-11. And what it means basically is the banks have to know their customers and not only that, they have to know the customers of yours if you're transacting business on your customer's behalf with any bank. So that means we have to know who you are, we have to know as much as we can about your company because those are details that are required by banks and financial institutions to uh, take into account when they set up accounts uh, for their clients. Uh, it's, uh, it's basically, they have to be able to identify you, which means they're going to need a picture ID, they're going to need your handwriting or your signature, they're going to need to know where you live, they're going to need to know where your business is, they're going to need all of your business documentation to substantiate the business. And once they have all of that, then they can usually generate the paperwork needed to set up the account. AML is the Anti-Money Laundering Act, which was also passed after 9-11 and is basically the government's way to try to track all payments, both money that's coming in to the U.S. and money that's going out of the U.S. Uh, generally, we're talking about wire transactions, but it could be any electronic transaction, an automated clearinghouse transaction, or even large movements of monetary cash or paper currencies. Uh, so it's an important aspect because um, it's looked at every single day and it's something that every bank is required to be aware of and to monitor um, at every single banking office that they have. Um, there are two other key acronyms that come into play when we're talking with anti-money laundering. That is BSA, which stands for the Bank Secrecy Act, and CTRs, which stands for Cash Transaction Reports. Both of these are um, items that the bank is required to administer if they think that there is some shady dealings going on with uh, clients relative to cash, um, as far as um, either bringing in cash or taking out cash, or if there are types of transactions that are occurring that are unusual for the business. Let's say you're a business that's handled checks forever and all of a sudden you start handling cash and you start bringing in large amounts of cash. Well, when that happens, then the bank is required to file a Bank Secrecy Act uh, report or a memorandum that goes to the, the various financial monitoring institutions. FinCEN is one of the biggest ones. Um, so they're looking to make sure that there's no you know, money laundering going on or any kinds of you know, terrorist activities that are being financed through various parties. And then the cash transaction report is important because anytime you take money out of an account that's $10,000 or more, then that typically triggers the filing of a CTR or a cash transaction report. And so that goes to FinCEN and the Fed and they monitor those activities as well um, because they're very, very conscious about any money laundering uh, for uh, drug related or terrorist related activities. So uh, if you're coming in and you're getting uh, $5,000 in cash and then you come back an hour or two later and get another $5,000 in cash, that's going to trigger a BSA report because it looks like you're, type, you're trying to structure your cash, uh, your cash uh, withdrawals and that's going to make the bank want to figure out what's going on, especially if you never come in and, and get cash. If you're a cash-based business, not as big of a deal and usually they'll fire a, um, you know, kind of a, a notice that you're doing this and then it, it doesn't really trigger anything, but if it's something you don't ever do or you hardly ever do, you'll get noticed by pretty much any bank um, if you're doing that. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is a new thing that just came down the pike called the Beneficial Ownership Form, which is not required of all businesses um, except sole proprietors um, when you open an account or even when you open an additional account if you've already opened an account in the name of that entity. And what it is is it's a four-page form that the bank will send you where you have to certify who the owners of the entity are if they own more than 25%. And then you have to sign, whoever is a major signer on the entity has to sign the final page 
and then you have to submit that to the bank in order for them to be able to open the accounts. Now, something to keep in mind is the banks are only allowed to have an account open for 30 days before they have to have that beneficial ownership form. And if they don't get that in, they are forced to close the account. So while it's not something we enjoy doing, it's something we're required to comply with. And so that's the rules and we just have to follow them. So hope that information has been helpful to you. Uh, keep in mind that the banks are watching all of the activities of their clients and KYC and AML and the beneficial ownership forms are some major requirements that banks have to work with in order to keep everybody legal and above board. Hope you enjoyed the information. Hope to catch you on the next video on that with Boston Private.